how can we use the features in OpenBDLM that allow us to generate synthetic data. Why is synthetic data useful? It, because in, with synthetic data, we control everything. So it's a good tool to uh, verify if the new development we're using in OpenBDLM uh, are sound and to verify and check ourselves. Because with synthetic data, we have access to the underlying truth. So we can verify with this that everything works properly. So to start with, we launch OpenBDLM. Then what we want to do is to use the interactive tool. So option zero, option zero here. So we want to give a name. So we're going to call it example synthetic. Okay, return. So here for the first time, what we want to do is, does this aim at create synthetic data? The answer is yes. So I type Y. So how many time series do I want to simulate? In this case, it's a single one. So I'm going to type one. So I need to define first the time steps from the initial point to the end point of the time series I want to simulate. For instance, I can say here 2005, uh, 2000 month 01 day 01 return until 2005 01 01 return. Okay, what is the time step size I want to generate synthetic data for? In this case, I can type one for one day. Okay, so now I create 100, uh, 1,828 800, time step for this time series. So how many model classes we want? In this case, we want no regime switching. So it's going to be only one model class. Which component we want? So here, keep in mind that this synthetic data generation is equivalent to the run demo, uh, the run demo data that we've shown uh, in introduction in the first getting started video. So here the components are going to be 11 because we want a level. Then we want a periodic component with a yearly period, so 31, and 41 for our residual autoregressive term. So type return. It builds automatically the model as well as synthetic data. So it shows here that data is available from 2000 till 2005. It shows here that it has a constant time step for all the time step of 24 hours. You can close this one. We can see the amplitude of the raw data. So this is simply a periodic component. It's very simple. And we have no missing data. Okay, so here, uh, what we can do is we can type tree to accept, estimate hidden state values. So directly type tree, and we can use, for instance, this, the common filter to do it, option one, and it's going to automatically estimate the hidden states. So this is what we have here. We have the autoregressive term, which is pretty small. We have the second periodic component, first one, and what we have here is the local level. So what you can see here, initially, we have very high uncertainty. Why? Because here we didn't estimate our initial hidden states. So this is why we have a lot of uncertainty to begin with because it starts to learn. And the more data we collect, the more all of this gets smoothed out. And we have uh, here a close match between the truth, which is the red dash line, and our estimated hidden states represented by the black line, as well with its confidence interval. Same here for AR. Let me close this one, Q. Uh, we can see if we go closer, that we have a good match between the predicted and uh, the ground truth. So this is for my local level, and this is for my uh, raw data here that I have. And if I uh, redo the same step, so I can go back and launch OpenVDLM, but instead of using the, the filtering, I use the smoothing step. So I'm going to load my preload file number nine, and I'm going to estimate my hidden states, option three, and I want to use a smoother option two rather than filter. You're going to see that my hidden states now are going to be very well estimated because I don't only use a forward pass, I use the forward and backward pass. So this is what I'm going to see here. So you see that really given the amplitude, my autoregressive term is really negligible, very, very small. So I can see that now I don't have the initial uncertainty that I had in the previous case when using filtering. Why? Because now I use back and forward. So forward pass for filtering, backward pass then. 
so we can see raw data here. So this is how we can use the feature of generating synthetic data, and you can use any of the hidden state component in OpenBDLM to generate very complex data that can mimic any data set.